The shuttle always applauds its own return with a sonic boom, sometimes two of them. We uh, ought to remind our viewers, as we always do when we cover the landings, that there is no engine power on board that ship. It is a high-speed glider. And Commander Bob Crippen, who has been at the controls since about the 45,000-foot mark, Bob Crippen will bring her in and has only one opportunity to do so. Uh, just, uh, just started his turn now around the uh, heading alignment circle uh, to align himself up with the runway. Uh, he's about uh, 35,000 feet in the air, uh, doing about uh, 300 miles an hour at this time. 46,000 feet. It will touch down traveling at about 220 miles an hour, about one and a half times faster than a commercial DC-9. I think probably the most exciting thing, there we are, rather dramatic boom, boom, <laughs> as it broke the sound barrier, heading the other way cutting down below the speed of sound. I was going to say the most dramatic part of the trip, and I'm not sure you really catch it on television, although that's a pretty dramatic view, is how steep the incline is as it heads into the landing strip. Now we use it. 800 knots, 35,000 feet. We use a final glide slope uh, of about uh, 19 degrees, uh, which is... Uh, you know, considerably steeper than any uh, normal airplane comes in at. White knuckle, as they say. I think that's about six times as steep as the approach of a commercial jetliner. And you see it there. It is literally hurtling, falling from the sky. It's uh, not a straight flight either, is it, John? Uh, there are what they call roll reversals. And by that, I don't mean that the pilot takes over for the commander. A roll reversal means that it's rolling back and forth. Yeah, we do that uh, earlier in the entry. We do a series of S-turns coming down, and that's the way we uh, adjust our, our range slightly, uh, and we can correct for uh, minute errors that we might have made during our deorbit burn. We correct by doing these S-turns, and then uh, if we're a little bit uh, long, well, we can straighten out, and if we're too close, we do a series of uh, larger turns. About two minutes to touchdown. Again, the weather at the Kennedy Space Center this morning in Florida was bad, so the decision was made to bring the shuttle home after a week in space to bring it home to Edwards Air Force Base in California. Hello, Chris. Chase is aboard. Hello, Chase. Chase is one of the jet planes that uh, travels along with the shuttle. And we'll join on them and then, uh, you know, take pictures of the uh, orbiter uh, just before landing. Uh, he's be lining up with the runway now, and he'll be intercepting uh, the extended runway center line at about 13,000 feet in the air. He's uh, got plenty of room. That runway is 7.3 miles long. It's a uh, desert bed. The seating uh, situation there, we have four astronauts up top, where you see those big black windows in the front, the top windows and one astronaut seated below in the mid-deck, and he doesn't have a very good view of anything at this He does have a, you know, a little porthole out the side that he can watch, but uh, he's, as you say, not a very good view. The short straw. Uh, the the, the uh, commander, Bob Crippen, now is transitioning. He has been flying instruments, uh, and now he's transitioned outside, and he's uh, looking through what we call a HUD or a heads-up display. It projects his airspeed and his altitude on the windscreen, and he's looking at the landing area now. Uh, in preparation to, uh, to start his uh, final flare for landing. And the flare will be nose up just a little bit. We're about 30 seconds from touchdown, the 11th flight of the shuttle. Success following a failure in their efforts to retrieve a satellite. There you see it falling. That just plummets to Earth, doesn't it? Coming down onto the desert, there's the flare. Here comes the landing gear. Commander Bob Crippen's third flight, second at the controls. And it is down. A beautiful, beautiful landing. From everything we saw and heard, it was absolutely perfect, John. Right on the money. With this long runway, we'll use virtually no braking and just uh, let the vehicle roll to a stop. Still a beautiful sight. Slightly uh, terrifying to see when you realize that there is no engine power on board. And the 42nd manned flight for the United States rolls to a halt. Um, 
with some minor problems, uh, a big problem that was, as I said, turned into a success. The mission comes to an end. This is Morton Dean at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, along with astronaut John Creighton. The astronauts will remain on board for about 30 or 40 minutes. And the flight, the 11th shuttle flight, is over.